In a previous video, called Extracting Composites High Frequency Information Back into an Image, we discussed how to use the Frequency Separation tool to split an image in half, separating the high frequency from the low frequency information. The low frequency part of an image is where you find information pertaining to brightness and color, and the high frequency side of an image is where you find the information pertaining to definition. We then explored how to take that high frequency information layer and apply it to your image to increase the overall sharpness of the image. And in case you didn't see that video or need a refresher, let's look again at what high and low frequency information are more closely because I know it's counterintuitive. So I've opened the Wizard Nebula image in Affinity Photo. I'm going to go up to the Filters drop-down menu and select Frequency Separation. When the Frequency Separation tool opens, we'll see the tool itself and a slider bar on the image. On the tool, I'm going to drag the radius all the way to 100 pixels, which tells the tool to separate all the high frequency information from the low frequency information. The slider bar on the image allows me to see the effect. If I move the slider bar on the image all the way to the right, we can see only the high frequency information. And if I move it all the way to the left, we can see only the low frequency information. As you can see, the high frequency information has our definition and sharpness, and the low frequency information contains our brightness and color. And if I hit apply, the original image will be destroyed. It will be split in half, separated into high and low frequency layers. And if I make visible only the low frequency layer, we can see only the color and brightness. And if I make visible only the high frequency layer, we can see only the sharpness. Now, if you saw the video on extracting and compositing high frequency information back into an image, you would recall that we can take that high frequency information and drag it over our image to enhance the sharpness and definition of whatever is already in the image. Now we're going to go to the next level and learn how to use the high and low frequency information from each color channel. Let's say I'm working with my Wizard Nebula here and I want to add more high frequency information just to the blue area. The most obvious way to do that would be to frequency separate the entire image, duplicate the high frequency layer and apply the duplicate to the entire image, and use an erase brush to erase the additional high frequency information not in a blue area. But the erase brush can be clumsy and it can leave an image looking like it's been manipulated. There's a better way to go about this. I could just take the high frequency information only from the blue channel. The high frequency information from the blue channel is mainly only going to affect blue regions of the image. Let me show you how to do that. It's not difficult. We'll begin by doing it in PixInsight. You can take the image that you have developed so far and export it as a lossless TIFF into PixInsight if you use PixInsight. And there you can use the split RGB tool, I've circled it above, and split your image into its RGB channels. Then, since I want the blue information, I can just save the blue layer as a lossless TIFF and bring it back into my non-destructive layer-based photo editor, in my case, Affinity Photo, and there, use the frequency separation tool to extract the high frequency information. But I don't need PixInsight to separate the channels. I can do this just as well in Affinity Photo. Okay, now I have the same image in Affinity Photo. And with the image layer selected, I'm going to go down to the channel mixer tool. Then with the red channel selected, I'm going to turn red all the way down to zero. Then with the green channel selected, I'm going to turn green all the way down to zero. This leaves me with only the information from the blue channel, which I can then export as an image, ideally a lossless TIFF for real editing. Then I can drag the image back into the editor as a layer, split the layer using the frequency separation tool, and thereby get the high frequency information pertaining to the blue channel. To illustrate, I'm going to go ahead and create the green and the red channels as well, and then I'm going to split all of those channels into their respective high and low frequency information. So I've made the red, green, and blue images, and I'll just drag them back into the photo editor, so they each form a separate red, green, and blue layer. And I'll then run frequency separation on them. Okay, here I've run frequency separation on each layer and gone about already labeling it. You can see we have a color image, and, and that's because I have screen composited the low frequency information from the green and blue layers onto the red layer. They have added all their color information together, which is what gives us a full color image. Now let's head back just the red high frequency information. You can see sharpness added to the red region of the nebula. The red channel also affects the stars because stars are broadband emitters. Now let's see what happens when we take away the red high frequency information and add the green high frequency information. You see some sharpness spread out through the red regions and into the blue regions. This is because the green channel is not a primary color like the red and blue channel. The green channel is a catch-all channel and it affects all the colors to be found between red and blue. 
and has a fair bit of red and blue mixed in with it. But its sharpness is more spread out and less intense than what we saw in the red high frequency information. Let's go back and take a look at the red high frequency information. And if we add them together, we have most of the sharpness within the image, because most sharpness in any astrophotography image is contained between green and red. Now I will remove the red and green high frequency information and add the blue. You can see that it adds its sharpness almost exclusively to the blue regions. Even then, its effect is pretty weak. And that's because in many astrophotography images, blue is a relatively weak influence in terms of sharpness. But we can increase the impact of its influence with something like an unsharp mask. I also like the blue high frequency layer and the unsharp mask tool. This will add the unsharp mask tool to the blue high frequency information layer. So the unsharp mask tool will only affect the blue high frequency information. Because blue has a relatively weak influence in terms of sharpness in this image, I'll crank the radius way up and then add to the factor by a good bit. And you can see when I do that the sharpness is increasing considerably within the blue regions of the image. But what if I wanted to increase sharpness in a red area of the image? Well, I could extract the high frequency information only from the red layer and then add something like an unsharp mask or a high pass filter to it to increase the sharpness found only within the red regions of the image. I shouldn't really say only within the red regions because in color images, all three colors have a little play at all times all over the image. But nonetheless, the red channel will affect mostly the red areas of the image. Now the benefits don't just come from the high frequency side of the information. We can also improve an image by using the low frequency information from a specific color channel. Let's say I look at this image and I don't care for the, the bluish tinge to the reddish color in the upper left and the lower right side of the image where the outer dimmer regions of the nebula are. In other words, I feel that the blue channel has had too much influence in those outer regions due to the dimness of the light. So I want to reduce the influence of the blue channel in dim regions of the image. However, I want to retain all the sharpness that I have. I only want to reduce the influence of the color. Fortunately, with frequency separation of the discrete color channels, that problem is a non-issue. With the blue low frequency layer selected, I can then open up a live luminosity range mask. This will allow me to constrict the blue low frequency information in certain levels of luminosity through the image. I'll set the range mask to linear because I want to make a fairly sharp constriction keeping it just to the dimmer regions of the nebula, where the dim light has allowed the blue to become a little over-dominant. And I'll draw the left side of the filter down until I see the blue withdraw from the dim regions of the image. Now, unfortunately, when I made that change, you probably saw that in the middle of the image, the blue colors were affected. All the colors really became a little less popping, a little less vibrant. And that's because there is a little blue in everything. I only want to restrict the flow of blue to the darker regions of that image. So I'm going to constrain the reduction of the blue only to the very dimmest regions of the nebula. I'll do this by left clicking on the graph, creating a new edit point, which I'll draw up sharply until I see the colors return to the rest of the nebula. Now much of the blue will be pulled out of the dimmest regions of the nebula, but still be retained throughout the rest of the nebula to keep our popping colors. So as you can see, we can use both high and low frequency information from each channel discreetly to make very specific and even more advanced editing changes to an image. We can use the high frequency information separated from the red, green, or blue color channel to modify sharpness within red or blue or general green regions of any image. And likewise, we can use the low frequency information drawn from the red, green, or blue channels to make very specific color or brightness edits to regions of an image that are influenced primarily by any of those specific colors. I hope that helps, and if you have any thoughts, observations, or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And as always, thank you for watching, and thank you for your likes and subscribes, and well, just making this channel grow so fast. I'm, I'm very grateful to everybody. I hope you're having a blast shooting astrophotography and just as much fun editing your images. Now, you know what comes next. Get out there and shoot the sky.